30 Worst Alcoholics in Hollywood History. Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into the heartbreaking tales of Hollywood's brightest stars who faced incredible struggles behind the glitz and glamour. Discover how addiction and personal demons shaped their careers and lives. Stay tuned as we reveal the untold stories of these legendary celebrities and find out what truly happened behind the scenes. Let's uncover these captivating and tragic journeys together. Gail Russell Gail Russell, born on September 21, 1924, in Chicago, Illinois, was an American actress who gained prominence during the 1940s and 1950s. With her captivating beauty and exceptional talent, Russell quickly rose to stardom in the film industry. Her breakthrough role came in 1943 when she starred opposite John Wayne in the film Angel and the Bad Man at just 19 years old. This film established her as a rising star in Hollywood. Throughout her career, Gail Russell appeared in a variety of films, most notably The Uninvited, 1944, and The Ghost Ship, 1943. Despite her success on screen, Russell faced significant personal struggles, particularly with alcoholism. Her addiction severely impacted both her career and personal life. She battled these challenges throughout her life, and they ultimately led to a decline in her professional achievements. Gail Russell's life came to a tragic end on August 26, 1961, when she died at the young age of 36 due to liver damage caused by acute and chronic alcoholism. Despite her short and tumultuous life, her legacy endures through her work in classic Hollywood films. She is remembered as a symbol of beauty and talent, as well as a testament to the difficulties many stars face during Hollywood's golden age. If you find this video not interesting enough, hit the like button to save it and watch it later. Marie Prevost Marie Prevost, born on November 8, 1896, in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada, was a prominent actress during the silent and early sound film eras. Her charm and versatility quickly made her a favorite in Hollywood. Prevost gained significant recognition with her role in the 1926 film The Marriage Clause, which showcased her talent and secured her place in the industry. She was one of the popular Senate bathing beauties at Keystone Studios, adding to her early fame. Prevost's career included a variety of roles in both comedies and dramas, highlighting her adaptability as an actress. She worked with several leading studios of her time, further cementing her status in Hollywood. However, her career faced several setbacks as she struggled with personal issues, including alcoholism. This battle with addiction took a toll on her professional life, leading to fewer opportunities and a gradual decline in her career. Tragically, Marie Prevost's life was cut short on January 21, 1937, when she died at the age of 40, due to acute alcoholism. Her story serves as a poignant reminder of the challenges many actors faced during the early days of Hollywood. Despite the personal and professional struggles she endured, her contributions to cinema remain significant, and she is remembered for her impact on the industry during its formative years. Mary Astor Mary Astor, born on May 3, 1906, in Quincy, Illinois, was a highly versatile and talented actress whose career spanned over five decades. She made a seamless transition from silent films to talkies, which highlighted her adaptability and skill. One of her most iconic roles was in the 1941 film The Maltese Falcon, where she played Bridget O'Shaughnessy opposite Humphrey Bogart cementing her status as a leading actress in Hollywood. Astor's filmography is rich with memorable performances in a variety of genres. She won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in The Great Lie, 1941, and continued to impress audiences with her talent in films like Meet Me in St. Louis, 1944, and Hush, Hush, Sweet Charlotte, 1964. Her ability to perform in both dramatic and comedic roles made her a beloved figure in the industry. Despite her professional success, Mary Astor faced numerous personal challenges. Her life was marked by a highly publicized custody battle and struggles with alcoholism, 
which she candidly detailed in her autobiography, My Story, published in 1959. Astor passed away on September 25, 1987, at the age of 81 due to respiratory failure. Her legacy endures through her contributions to cinema and the resilience she demonstrated throughout her tumultuous life. Rita Hayworth Rita Hayworth, born Margarita Carmen Cancino on October 17, 1918, in Brooklyn, New York, was an iconic actress and dancer whose career flourished during the golden age of Hollywood. Known for her stunning beauty and captivating performances, Hayworth quickly became a star. Her breakout role came in the 1946 film Gilda, where she portrayed the sultry and enigmatic Gilda Munson Farrell, solidifying her place as a leading lady and sex symbol in the industry. Throughout her illustrious career, Hayworth appeared in numerous successful films, showcasing her remarkable dancing skills in musicals like You Were Never Lovelier, 1942, and Cover Girl, 1944. She also delivered powerful performances in dramas such as The Lady from Shanghai, 1947, and Pal Joey, 1957. Her versatility and talent earned her widespread acclaim and a lasting impact on Hollywood. Off-screen, Rita Hayworth's life was marked by personal challenges, including a series of tumultuous marriages and a long battle with alcoholism. In her later years, she suffered from Alzheimer's disease, which ultimately led to her death on May 14, 1987, at the age of 68. Despite the difficulties she faced, Hayworth's legacy as a glamorous and talented star endures, and she remains a beloved figure in the history of cinema. Judy Garland Judy Garland, born Frances Ethel Gum on June 10, 1922, in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, was a legendary actress and singer whose career spanned over four decades. She is best remembered for her role as Dorothy in the 1939 classic The Wizard of Oz, where her rendition of Over the Rainbow became an enduring symbol of hope and innocence. This role catapulted her to international fame and established her as one of Hollywood's brightest stars. Garland's career was marked by both triumph and tragedy. She starred in numerous successful films, including Meet Me in St. Louis, 1944, Easter Parade, 1948, and A Star is Born, 1954, where her performances showcased her extraordinary vocal and acting talents. Despite her professional achievements, Garland struggled with personal issues, including pressures from the studio system, which led to a dependency on prescription medications. Judy Garland's life was a constant battle with addiction and mental health issues, ultimately leading to her untimely death on June 22, 1969, at the age of 47. Despite her struggles, her legacy as an iconic performer endures, her work continues to inspire new generations, and she is celebrated for her immense contributions to the entertainment industry. Elizabeth Taylor Elizabeth Taylor, born on February 27, 1932, in London, England, was one of the most iconic actresses of the 20th century. Renowned for her extraordinary beauty and acting prowess, she became a household name at a young age. Taylor's breakthrough came with her role in National Velvet, 1944, when she was just 12 years old, setting the stage for a prolific career in Hollywood. Taylor's filmography includes a series of notable performances in classics such as Cleopatra, 1963, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, 1966, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, 1958. Her portrayal of complex characters earned her two Academy Awards for Best Actress. Beyond her acting, Taylor was known for her glamorous lifestyle, high-profile marriages, and extensive philanthropic work, particularly in HIV-AIDS advocacy. Despite her professional success, Elizabeth Taylor's life was marked by personal struggles, including numerous marriages and health issues. She faced challenges with addiction and battled various illnesses throughout her life. Taylor passed away on March 23, 2011, at the age of 79. Her legacy remains profound, 
both for her contributions to cinema and her humanitarian efforts, which continue to influence and inspire. Jean Harlow Jean Harlow, born Harlan Harlow Carpenter on March 3, 1911 in Kansas City, Missouri, was a trailblazing actress who became one of the first true sex symbols of Hollywood's golden age. Known for her platinum blonde hair and sultry screen presence, Harlow captivated audiences with her performances in films such as Platinum Blonde, 1931, and Red Dust, 1932. Her magnetic appeal and comedic talent made her a beloved figure in the industry. Harlow's career, though brief, was marked by a series of iconic roles that showcased her versatility. She starred in a number of successful films, including Dinner at Eight, 1933, and Bombshell, 1933, where her ability to blend sex appeal with humor set her apart from her contemporaries. Her work helped define the archetype of the modern screen siren, leaving a lasting impact on the genre. Tragically, Jean Harlow's life was cut short when she died at the age of 26 on June 7, 1937, due to kidney failure. Despite her untimely death, her legacy endures through the timeless films she left behind and her pioneering role in shaping Hollywood's portrayal of femininity and glamour. Harlow remains an enduring icon, remembered for her contributions to cinema and her indelible mark on the industry. Dorothy Dandridge Dorothy Dandridge, born on November 9, 1922 in Cleveland, Ohio, was a groundbreaking actress and singer who made history as one of the first African-American women to achieve mainstream success in Hollywood. Her extraordinary talent and stunning beauty brought her widespread acclaim. Dandridge's most famous role came in the 1954 film Carmen Jones, for which she received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress, making her the first African-American woman to be nominated in that category. Throughout her career, Dandridge faced numerous challenges due to the racial barriers of her time. Despite this, she delivered memorable performances in films such as Porgy and Bess, 1959, and Island in the Sun, 1957. Her work not only showcased her immense talent, but also paved the way for future generations of African-American actors and actresses, challenging the limitations placed on her by the industry. Dorothy Dandridge's life was marked by personal and professional struggles, including a tumultuous love life and financial difficulties. She battled with mental health issues and alcoholism, which ultimately contributed to her premature death on September 8, 1965, at the age of 42. Her legacy, however, lives on as a pioneering figure who broke racial barriers and left an indelible impact on Hollywood and the arts. Clara Bow Clara Bow, born on July 29, 1905 in Brooklyn, New York, was an iconic actress who became the quintessential it girl of the 1920s. She skyrocketed to fame during the silent film era with her charismatic performances and undeniable screen presence. Bao's breakthrough role came in the 1927 film It, which solidified her status as a leading actress and sex symbol, epitomizing the flapper era with her carefree and vivacious persona. Throughout her career, Clara Bow starred in numerous successful films, including Man Trap, 1926, Wings, 1927, and The Plastic Age, 1925. Her ability to convey a wide range of emotions without spoken dialogue made her a beloved figure in silent cinema. She seamlessly transitioned to talkies with films like The Wild Party, 1929, proving her versatility and enduring appeal. Despite her professional success, Bo's personal life was fraught with challenges. She faced immense pressure from the Hollywood studio system, struggled with mental health issues, and dealt with the scandalous media scrutiny of her relationships and lifestyle. Clara Bow retired from acting in the early 1930s and lived a relatively private life until her death on September 27, 1965, at the age of 60. Her legacy as a pioneering actress and cultural icon remains influential, highlighting the highs and lows of early Hollywood stardom. 
Congratulations on completing 1-3 of this exploration journey. If you enjoyed this video, please comment 1. Otherwise, comment 0. We will use this feedback to evaluate and improve our content. Thank you. Albert Finney Albert Finney, born on May 9, 1936 in Salford, England, was a distinguished actor known for his extraordinary range and powerful performances. He emerged as a prominent figure in British cinema during the 1960s. Finney's breakout role came in the 1960 film Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, where his portrayal of the rebellious Arthur Seaton garnered critical acclaim and established him as a leading actor of his generation. Finney's illustrious career spanned over five decades, during which he delivered remarkable performances in both film and theater. He received widespread recognition for his roles in films such as Tom Jones, 1963, which earned him an Academy Award nomination, and Murder on the Orient Express, 1974, where he played the iconic detective Hercule Poirot. His versatility allowed him to tackle a diverse array of characters, from the larger-than-life roles in Annie, 1982, to more nuanced performances in The Dresser, 1983, and Aaron Brockovich, 2000. Despite his numerous accolades and successes, Finney remained a private individual, often shunning the Hollywood spotlight. He continued to work in the industry until his later years, leaving an indelible mark on the world of acting. Albert Finney passed away on February 7, 2019, at the age of 82 from a chest infection. His legacy endures through his significant contributions to film and theater, celebrating a career that was both prolific and profoundly impactful. Sterling Hayden Sterling Hayden, born on March 26, 1916, in Montclair, New Jersey, was a commanding presence in Hollywood, known for his rugged good looks and deep voice. His career took off in the 1950s, with one of his most memorable roles being Johnny Clay, a criminal mastermind in Stanley Kubrick's 1956 film The Killing. Hayden's performance in this film solidified his reputation as a versatile and talented actor. Throughout his career, Hayden appeared in a variety of films that showcased his ability to portray complex characters. He starred in notable movies such as Dr. Strangelove, 1964, where he played the eccentric Brigadier General Jack D. Ripper, and The Godfather, 1972, in which he took on the role of corrupt police officer Captain McCluskey. His performances were marked by a distinctive intensity and authenticity that made him a favorite among directors and audiences alike. Despite his professional success, Hayden's personal life was tumultuous. He struggled with alcoholism and had a brief, tumultuous marriage to actress Madeline Carroll. Additionally, his experiences during World War II as an OSS officer left a lasting impact on him. Sterling Hayden passed away on May 23, 1986, at the age of 70 due to cancer. His legacy remains through his powerful performances and contributions to cinema, reflecting a life of both remarkable achievement and profound personal challenges. Larry Hagman Larry Hagman, born on September 21, 1931, in Fort Worth, Texas, was an iconic television actor best known for his roles in two highly successful TV series. Hagman's career breakthrough came with his role as Major Anthony Nelson in the beloved sitcom I Dream of Jeannie, which aired from 1965 to 1970. His comedic timing and on-screen chemistry with co-star Barbara Eden made the show a classic, endearing him to audiences worldwide. Hagman's most enduring and infamous role, however, was that of J.R. Ewing, the scheming oil tycoon in the long-running soap opera Dallas, which aired from 1978 to 1991. His portrayal of the charming yet ruthless J.R. Ewing became a cultural phenomenon, earning him critical acclaim and multiple award nominations. The character of J.R. Ewing became one of the most memorable villains in television history, and Hagman's performance left an indelible mark on popular culture. Despite his professional achievements, 
Hagman faced significant personal struggles, including a long battle with alcoholism and a liver transplant in 1995. He continued to work in the entertainment industry until his death on November 23, 2012, at the age of 81, due to complications from acute myeloid leukemia. Larry Hagman's legacy endures through his iconic television roles and his impact on the medium, celebrated for his talent and his ability to create unforgettable characters. Alan Ladd. Alan Ladd, born on September 3, 1913, in Hot Springs, Arkansas, was a prominent figure in Hollywood, celebrated for his roles as a leading man during the 1940s and 1950s. He rose to fame with his portrayal of Philip Raven, a hitman with a conscience, in the 1942 film This Gun for Hire. This role showcased his stoic screen presence and rugged good looks, establishing him as a major star in the film industry. Ladd's career continued to flourish with a series of notable performances in both film noirs and westerns. He starred in classics such as Shane, 1953, where his portrayal of the titular character earned him critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination. Other significant films included The Blue Dahlia, 1946, and Whispering Smith, 1948. Ladd's ability to convey deep emotion with a minimalist approach made him a unique and compelling actor. Despite his success on screen, Alan Ladd's personal life was marked by struggles with alcoholism. His battle with addiction, combined with the pressures of maintaining his public image, took a toll on his health and well-being. Tragically, Ladd passed away on January 29, 1964, at the age of 50, due to an accidental overdose of alcohol and barbiturates. His legacy endures through his memorable performances and his contribution to the golden age of Hollywood cinema. William Holden William Holden, born William Franklin Beadle Jr. on April 17, 1918, in O'Fallon, Illinois, was a distinguished actor whose career spanned over four decades. He became a prominent figure in Hollywood with his breakthrough role as Joe Gillis in the 1950 film Sunset Boulevard, where his performance earned him an Academy Award nomination and catapulted him to stardom. Holden's portrayal of the struggling screenwriter remains one of the most iconic roles in film history. Holden's career was marked by a series of critically acclaimed performances in a variety of genres. He won the Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Stalag 17, 1953, and delivered powerful performances in films such as The Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957, and Network, 1976. His ability to embody complex, often conflicted characters made him a versatile and respected actor. Holden's charisma and depth on screen captivated audiences and critics alike. Despite his professional achievements, Holden struggled with personal demons, including a long battle with alcoholism. These struggles ultimately led to his untimely death on November 12, 1981, at the age of 63, following a fall at his home. William Holden's legacy is preserved through his impressive body of work, which continues to inspire and influence actors and filmmakers. His contributions to cinema have left an indelible mark on the industry, cementing his place as one of Hollywood's greatest talents. Montgomery Clift Montgomery Clift, born on October 17, 1920 in Omaha, Nebraska, was a trailblazing actor known for his intense and emotionally charged performances. He made a significant impact on Hollywood during the mid-20th century, pioneering the method acting technique alongside contemporaries like Marlon Brando and James Dean. Clift's breakthrough role came in the 1948 film The Search where his portrayal of a traumatized World War II soldier earned him critical acclaim and his first Academy Award nomination. Clift continued to deliver memorable performances in films such as A Place in the Sun, 1951, From Here to Eternity, 1953, and The Misfits, 1961. His ability to convey deep vulnerability and complexity made him one of the most compelling actors of his time.
Clift's dedication to his craft and his willingness to tackle challenging and diverse roles set him apart in the industry, earning him multiple Oscar nominations and a lasting legacy. Despite his professional success, Clift's life was marred by personal struggles, including a car accident in 1956 that left him with severe facial injuries. The pain from these injuries led to an addiction to painkillers and alcohol, which significantly affected his health and career. Montgomery Clift passed away on July 23, 1966, at the age of 45, from a heart attack. His legacy endures through his groundbreaking work and his influence on subsequent generations of actors, remembered as a pioneer of method acting and a profoundly talented performer. Lon Chaney Jr. Lon Chaney Jr., born Creighton Tull. Chaney on February 10, 1906 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, was a renowned American actor best known for his roles in horror films. He achieved iconic status with his portrayal of Larry Talbot in the 1941 film The Wolf Man, a role that defined his career and made him a staple in Universal's classic monster movies. Chaney's ability to evoke sympathy for his monstrous characters set him apart in the horror genre. Throughout his career, Chaney Jr. played a variety of memorable roles in films such as Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, 1943, Son of Dracula, 1943, and The Mummy's Tomb, 1942. His versatility and talent allowed him to bring depth to characters that might otherwise have been seen as purely monstrous. Despite being typecast in horror roles, Chaney managed to leave a lasting impression through his nuanced performances and dedication to his craft. Chaney's life, however, was plagued by personal difficulties, particularly his struggle with alcoholism. This addiction impacted his health and professional life, leading to a decline in his career. Lon Chaney Jr. passed away on July 12, 1973, at the age of 67, due to heart failure. Despite his personal battles, his contributions to the horror genre remain significant, and he is remembered as one of the defining figures in classic Hollywood horror films. His legacy lives on through the timeless appeal of his performances and his impact on the genre. Bella Lugosi Bella Lugosi, born Bella Ferenc de Soblasco on October 20, 1882, in Lugoj, Romania, was an iconic figure in the horror genre, best known for his portrayal of Count Dracula in the 1931 film Dracula. His chilling performance as the Transylvanian vampire established him as a horror movie legend and left an indelible mark on popular culture. Lugosi's striking presence and distinct accent made him the definitive Dracula, a role that he reprised several times throughout his career. Lugosi's career in Hollywood was closely tied to the horror genre, and he appeared in numerous films that capitalized on his eerie persona. He starred in classics such as White Zombie, 1932, and The Black Cat, 1934, further cementing his status as a master of horror. Despite his typecasting, Lugosi's ability to bring a sense of sophistication and menace to his roles made him a beloved figure in the genre. Despite his professional success, Lugosi faced significant personal struggles. He was often typecast, limiting his opportunities for diverse roles, and he battled addiction to morphine, which he initially used to treat chronic pain. Bela Lugosi passed away on August 16, 1956, at the age of 73, due to a heart attack. His legacy endures through his unforgettable performances and his significant contributions to the horror genre, remembered as a true icon of classic cinema. Broderick Crawford Broderick Crawford, born on December 9, 1911, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, was a versatile American actor best known for his powerful performances in both film and television. He achieved significant acclaim with his portrayal of Willie Stark, a corrupt politician in the 1949 film All the King's Men, a role that earned him the Academy Award for Best Actor. This performance showcased Crawford's ability to embody complex, larger-than-life characters, solidifying his reputation as a formidable talent in Hollywood. 
Crawford's career spanned several decades, and he was known for his work in a variety of genres. He starred in notable films such as Born Yesterday, 1950, and Highway Patrol, 1955-1959, a television series where he played the tough, no-nonsense police chief Dan Matthews. His commanding presence and distinctive voice made him a standout in every role he took on, whether on the big screen or television. Despite his professional achievements, Crawford struggled with alcoholism, which affected his personal and professional life. His battle with addiction led to a decline in the quality and frequency of his work in later years. Broderick Crawford passed away on April 26, 1986, at the age of 74, due to a series of strokes. His legacy lives on through his impactful performances and his contributions to both film and television, remembered as a talented actor who brought depth and intensity to his roles. Gig Young Gig Young, born Byron Ellsworth Barr on November 4, 1913, in St. Cloud, Minnesota, was a talented actor known for his versatile performances in both film and television. He adopted the stage name Gig Young early in his career, which saw him achieve significant success. His most acclaimed role came in the 1969 film They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, where he played Rocky, the charismatic but cynical MC of a Depression-era dance marathon. This performance earned him the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor and solidified his reputation as a skilled character actor. Young's career spanned several decades, and he appeared in a wide range of films that showcased his adaptability. He starred in movies like Teacher's Pet, 1958, alongside Clark Gable and Doris Day, and That Touch of Mink, 1962, with Cary Grant and Doris Day. His ability to handle both comedic and dramatic roles made him a favorite among directors and audiences alike, and he enjoyed a steady stream of work throughout his career. Despite his professional success, Gig Young's personal life was fraught with difficulties. He struggled with alcoholism and depression, which impacted his relationships and his health. Tragically, Young's life ended in a murder-suicide on October 19, 1978, at the age of 64, when he shot his fifth wife and then himself. His legacy remains complicated, remembered both for his exceptional talent and the tragic circumstances of his death. Spencer Tracy Spencer Tracy, born on April 5, 1900 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was widely regarded as one of the greatest actors in Hollywood history. His naturalistic acting style and profound ability to convey deep emotion earned him critical acclaim and a lasting legacy. Tracy's breakthrough role came with the 1938 film Boys Town, where he portrayed Father Flanagan, earning him his second consecutive Academy Award for Best Actor after winning for Captain's Courageous, 1937. Tracy's illustrious career included a series of iconic performances in classic films. He starred alongside Katherine Hepburn in several movies, forming one of Hollywood's most beloved on-screen partnerships. Their collaborations included Adam's Rib, 1949, and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, 1967, the latter of which was released shortly after Tracy's death. His ability to seamlessly transition between comedy and drama made him a versatile and respected actor. Despite his professional triumphs, Tracy's personal life was marked by struggles with alcoholism and health issues. He maintained a long-term relationship with Katherine Hepburn while remaining married to his wife, Louise Treadwell. Spencer Tracy passed away on June 10, 1967, at the age of 67, from a heart attack. His legacy endures through his remarkable body of work and his status as a paragon of acting excellence, celebrated for his profound impact on the art of cinema. John Wayne John Wayne, born Marion Robert Morrison on May 26, 1907, in Winterset, Iowa, was an iconic figure in American cinema, particularly known for his roles in westerns. Wayne's rugged masculinity and commanding presence made him a beloved and influential actor. His breakthrough role came in the 1939 film Stagecoach, directed by John Ford, where he played the Ringo Kid. 
This role catapulted him to stardom and established him as a central figure in the Western genre. Throughout his illustrious career, Wayne starred in over 170 films, working with many legendary directors. He delivered memorable performances in classics such as True Grit, 1969, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Actor, The Searchers, 1956, and The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, 1962. His portrayal of strong, patriotic, and all-American characters resonated deeply with audiences and reflected the values of his era. Beyond acting, Wayne also produced and directed films, further cementing his legacy in Hollywood. Despite his professional achievements, Wayne's life was not without controversy. He was known for his strong political views and was a staunch advocate for conservative causes. John Wayne passed away on June 11, 1979, at the age of 72, from stomach cancer. His legacy endures through his vast body of work and his impact on the film industry, where he remains a symbol of the American West and a quintessential movie star. Glenn Ford Glenn Ford, born Gwilin Samuel Newton Ford, on May 1, 1916, in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada, was a versatile actor known for his compelling performances across various genres. Ford's career took off in the 1940s, and he became particularly famous for his roles in film noirs and westerns. His breakout role came in the 1946 film Gilda, where he starred opposite Rita Hayworth, playing the suave Johnny Farrell. This role solidified his status as a leading man in Hollywood. Over his extensive career, Ford showcased his talent in a wide array of films, demonstrating remarkable versatility. He starred in notable movies such as The Big Heat, 1953, 310 to Yuma, 1957, and The Blackboard Jungle, 1955. His ability to adapt to different genres, from gritty dramas to lighthearted comedies, made him a respected and beloved actor. Ford's performances were characterized by their depth and authenticity, earning him a lasting place in cinematic history. Despite his success on screen, Ford faced personal challenges, including struggles with alcoholism. However, he continued to work steadily in film and television, maintaining a strong presence in the industry. Glenn Ford passed away on August 30, 2006, at the age of 90, leaving behind a legacy of memorable performances and contributions to cinema. His enduring appeal and talent continue to be celebrated, reflecting a career marked by both artistic excellence and resilience. Errol Flynn Errol Flynn, born on June 20, 1909, in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia, was a charismatic and adventurous actor known for his swashbuckling roles in Hollywood. His breakthrough role came in the 1935 film Captain Blood, where his portrayal of the dashing pirate Peter Blood catapulted him to stardom. Flynn quickly became synonymous with the action-adventure genre, captivating audiences with his athletic prowess and undeniable charm. Flynn's career was marked by a series of iconic performances in films such as The Adventures of Robin Hood, 1938, the Seahawk, 1940, and The Charge of the Light Brigade, 1936. His ability to embody heroic and romantic figures made him one of the most popular leading men of his time. Beyond his film roles, Flynn was known for his larger-than-life personality and off-screen exploits, which only added to his legendary status. Despite his success, Flynn's life was riddled with personal challenges, including legal battles and a notorious struggle with alcoholism. His health deteriorated over the years, and he passed away on October 14, 1959, at the age of 50 from a heart attack. Errol Flynn's legacy endures through his memorable performances and his influence on the adventure film genre, remembered as one of Hollywood's original action stars. Richard Burton Richard Burton, born on November 10, 1925, in Pontrydyffyn, Wales, was a distinguished actor known for his powerful voice and intense performances. He gained prominence on both stage and screen, 
earning a reputation as one of the finest actors of his generation. Burton's breakthrough film role came in The Robe, 1953, where his portrayal of Marcellus Gallio brought him international acclaim and his first Academy Award nomination. Burton's career was characterized by a series of notable performances in films such as Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, 1966, Beckett, 1964, and Cleopatra, 1963, the latter of which also marked the beginning of his legendary romance with Elizabeth Taylor. His work in these films earned him multiple Oscar nominations and solidified his status as a leading actor in Hollywood. Burton's ability to convey deep emotion and complexity made his performances unforgettable and critically acclaimed. Despite his professional achievements, Burton's personal life was turbulent. His highly publicized marriages, particularly to Elizabeth Taylor, and his battles with alcoholism often overshadowed his career. Richard Burton passed away on August 5, 1984, at the age of 58 from a cerebral hemorrhage. His legacy remains significant, celebrated for his extraordinary talent and contributions to both theater and film, leaving an indelible mark on the acting world. Mickey Rooney Mickey Rooney, born Joseph Yule Jr. on September 23, 1920, in Brooklyn, New York, was one of Hollywood's most enduring and versatile actors. Starting his career as a child star, Rooney gained widespread fame with his role as Andy Hardy in the Andy Hardy series, which began in 1937. His portrayal of the all-American teenager made him a household name and a beloved figure in American cinema. Rooney's career spanned over nine decades, showcasing his incredible range as an actor. He appeared in a variety of genres, from musicals like Babes in Arms, 1939, alongside Judy Garland, to dramatic roles in films such as The Black Stallion, 1979. His ability to adapt to different types of roles and his natural talent for both comedy and drama earned him numerous accolades, including an honorary Academy Award for his lifetime achievements. Rooney's personal life was as dynamic as his career, marked by multiple marriages and financial troubles. He faced significant challenges, but continued to work consistently in film, television, and stage until his passing on April 6, 2014, at the age of 93. Mickey Rooney's legacy is a testament to his resilience and talent, remembered as a versatile performer who left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. U.C. Fields W.C. Fields, born William Claude Dukenfield on January 29, 1880, in Darby, Pennsylvania, was a legendary comedian and actor renowned for his distinctive drawl and sardonic wit. He began his career in vaudeville, where he honed his skills as a juggler and comedic performer. Fields transitioned to film in the early 1900s, bringing his unique style of humor to a wider audience. Fields became a major star in Hollywood during the 1930s and 1940s, starring in classic comedies such as It's a Gift, 1934, The Bank Dick, 1940, and My Little Chickadee, 1940, alongside Mae West. His characters often embodied a misanthropic yet endearing persona that resonated with audiences. Fields' ability to blend physical comedy with clever dialogue made him one of the most memorable comedians of his time. Fields' life was marked by a struggle with alcohol, which often became fodder for his comedic material. He crafted a public persona that played on his love of drink and disdain for conventionality, creating a lasting image in popular culture. W.C. Fields passed away on December 25, 1946, at the age of 66. His legacy endures through his timeless films and his influence on the genre of comedy, remembered as a master of wit and humor. Robert Walker Robert Walker, born Robert Hudson Walker on October 13, 1918, in Salt Lake City, Utah, was a talented actor whose career, though brief, left a lasting impression on Hollywood. He gained significant recognition for his role as the charming yet sinister Bruno Anthony in Alfred Hitchcock's thriller Strangers on a Train, 1951. 
This performance showcased Walker's ability to convey complex and dark characters, earning him critical acclaim. Walker began his career in the 1940s, appearing in films such as See Here, Private Hargrove, 1944, and Since You Went Away, 1944, where his boyish charm and relatable screen presence made him a favorite among audiences. His versatility allowed him to take on a variety of roles, from lighthearted comedies to intense dramas, demonstrating his range as an actor. Despite his growing success, Walker faced personal challenges, including a tumultuous marriage to actress Jennifer Jones and struggles with mental health. Tragically, Robert Walker's life was cut short when he died on August 28, 1951, at the age of 32 from an adverse reaction to prescription drugs. His untimely death marked the loss of a promising talent who had already made a significant impact on the film industry. Walker's legacy endures through his memorable performances, particularly in Strangers on a Train, which remains a classic in the thriller genre. He is remembered as an actor who brought depth and intensity to his roles, leaving a lasting mark on Hollywood. Thank you all for being among those who stayed till the end of the video. Comment too, so we can see you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Famous People channel for more insightful content. We appreciate your participation and look forward to sharing more engaging stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.